What's the word, y'all? About a week or so ago, I was listening to one of my favorite NBA podcasts, No Dunks, and they were putting together their all-fun team for this season. It's exactly what it sounds like. The players that they have the most fun watching on a night-in, night-out basis. And I was like, that's right up our alley. This whole community is just a bunch of people that enjoy the game of basketball. So let me put together my own all fun team for this year. Shout out to No Dunks, highly recommended. Some of y'all know them but don't realize that they rebranded and have their own YouTube channels. The same dudes they used to be on the starters back in the day. Back in the day. It's not that long ago. Um, but they have their own YouTube channel. Um, so shout out to them. If this is up your alley too, you should really subscribe to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. It is a newsletter that I own. Um, it, it comes out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, right to your inbox. It's completely free. And it's for people that want to keep up with the game of basketball. But the good parts of it like a week like this week it's a lot of conversations that's not basketball oriented but if you want the, the, the basketball portion and from some people that enjoy it and love the game hit the link in the description man completely free the only rule that they had and the rule that we're abiding by today is that you can only get one all-star that makes it extremely tough because we all enjoy Steph Curry, we all enjoy Nikola Jokic, we all enjoy Yonza that go bow Larry Market and this. He's like, there are so many all star kind of players. You can argue that every single one of the All-Stars are enjoyable and should be on his list. But today we only get one. So it's a way to shine light on some other fun players that you know, aren't all-star caliber. But I didn't go extremely like, oh, let's talk about all the snubs. These are the people that didn't make it because they're still fun as well. It's a little mixture of a couple different things. Just sit back, relax, and use the comment section and let me know your all-fun team as well. I tackled it as if it was an all-star ballot. I have a starting squad. It ain't no real order. I have a bench squad and then two wild card spots. So let's get into my all-star. I spent the most time trying to figure out, based on this season alone, what all-star have I enjoyed the most? Of course, you got Steph Curry when he's been healthy. healthy. You got Giannis. You got Braun. Like, Braun is having such a stellar season. But you know who I landed on? It's between two dudes. Two first-time all-stars. The first one was Anthony Edwards, and the second one was De'Aaron Fox. And I ultimately went with De'Aaron Fox as my all-star. Of my all-fun team all-star. This is a dude that I've been a fan of since his rookie season. He's one of my favorite dudes in the league for a long time. And, and last year, let's be real, there's a lot of ups and a lot of downs that a lot of people were turned off by De'Aaron Fox. This season, as of right now, the Kings are the two seed? They're the two seed because the Grizzlies just lost to the Lakers. So they're the two seed. He's the front runner for clutch player of the year. And it just seems like in the fourth quarter, he turns it on. He's doing everything right. And he is the guy that I enjoy watching the most in basketball right now. So he gets the nod. This is a team, the Sacramento Kings, where if they're playing, it don't matter if it's the, the dead of night. I'm tuned in, bro, and a lot of that is De'Aaron Fox, so he is my all-star, even though he's not the best all-star on the list. Hell, I think he went scoreless in the all-star game. He might be the only person in, in all-star history to literally not get a basket. You know what I'm saying? But in the actual regular season, he's been my most fun player. Boy, was it tough to make that decision. Uh, then my next guard position is a guy that probably should have been an all-star. We made a video about the New York Knicks two days ago, and then the Kenny curse, it continues to be a thing, and I'm trying to get rid of it. By talking about things that are amazing and things that can't go wrong. So I talk about the Knicks two days ago, and I look at their schedule before I upload that video. I'm like, you know what? They play against the Charlotte Hornets. I'm going to drop this video. Ain't no way they lose to the Hornets on their home court. They literally did. Um, no Jalen Brunson again, so that's probably the reason why. And they shot like 30% for the field in the second half. But the Kenny curse, ladies and gentlemen. But Jalen Brunson is undoubtedly the other guard when it comes to non-All-Stars. Me, when it comes to funness. There's some other people in conversation that we can talk about, but Jalen Brunson was a tier below all-star, at least at that point. But since then, he's been turning it up. Again, we made a whole Knicks video, and we spent a lot of time on Jalen Brunson, so I recommend going to watch that if you want to hear me talk more about JB. It's a lot of JBs. I can't, I can't say JB for everybody who has that initial. Jalen Brown gets the JB call for me. J oh, Jalen. We just go call him Jalen Brunson. All right, the full name is not that bad. My first forward position is a dude that has been a multiple-time all-star, but he hasn't really been in conversations this season. Um... Oh, was he an all-star? I'm pretty sure he was an all-star last year. What the heck? He had uh, went a couple seasons without being an all-star, and then he got back into it, and this season he wasn't even in the conversations. Yeah, Draymond Green did make the all-star game last season. He had went one, two, three seasons without being in it, and then last year, of course, he he had a really solid year. He was a DPOY candidate before his injuries and stuff, and he made it last year. This year he wasn't even in the conversations. The reason why Draymond Green is on my list as far as fun to watch it's because a good game from Draymond Green where he is playmaking out of his mind, it's, it's, harder to, it's so hard to find a connection like Draymond Green and Steph Curry or Draymond Green and Klay Thompson. 
He even like tonight, even though they lost to the OKC Thunder, when you go watch his moments, um, as I did after this game, he's just like to make an eye contact with Steph Curry. Steph Curry cut, boom! Steph Curry got got a nice shot. Yeah, he set a ton of illegal screens. He don't get called for him. That's part of that's part of the reasons why I love watching him. You know what I'm saying? And the the defensive IQ as a dude that loves the game of basketball and loves defense and basketball. There's not a lot of players with the IQ on the defensive side of the ball on the same level of Draymond Green currently. And when he is playmaking like he is right now, it's hard for me to say, man, that's not one of the most fun players for me to watch. Next player is a dude that always I've had a lot of love for. Um, it's Mikel Bridges. He's one of the homies, and since he's been traded to the Brooklyn Nets, I mean, he's putting up some insane numbers. So the numbers are so insane that a lot of people are predicting that next year he's going to make that all-star appearance. And again, I don't want to go that far. I don't know how this offseason looks. I don't know exactly. But since he's been in Brooklyn, his numbers are amazing. And he's doing things that he showed glimpses of in Phoenix, but obviously with, with Book there, with CP there, and DeAndre Aiden getting his touches too, he was kind of relegated to be, I don't want to say 3 and D because even he don't like being pigeonholed as that. But that's kind of what his role was. He put the ball on the floor occasionally take a mid-range jump shot here but now in Brooklyn it's like it's your it's your it's your car do what you got to do and he's showcasing the bag and it is extremely fun to watch right now especially we got the celebrate the celebration alone makes him on this list I saw Cameron Payne do the celebration a couple days ago and I know they played together they might have developed it together I don't even know but it feels like a strictly Mikel Bridges thing and my last forward and I'm actually giving it to a center is Alperin Sengun um, I think a lot of NBA nerds like me really enjoy the game of Al Prince and Goon because the footwork is elite and he's only a what year? Is this year two? Is this year three? Regardless, he's still extremely young. And though Steven Silas don't want to play him down a stretch in games that they're losing anyway, um, when he is on the court, it is fun to watch. He might have a game where he score 12 points. One of those baskets is going to be some crazy footwork making somebody look crazy. Actually, let me show you the clip that happened today. Ask me the last time I watched the Rockets game live. I'm going to tell you. Goddamn 20, 2022. You know what I'm saying? We in March of 2023. I ain't watched a live Rockets game in a long time. But I promise you I'm watching every time single and touch the ball. My fault. I got a, I got a message a little while ago saying, Kenny, please stop swearing at your videos um, because it's I can't watch them if you do. I might have just lost a viewer. Here's a possession. Come on, man. Whoop. Nerlis, where you going, my boy? Come on, man. What is the football analyst that used to do that back in the day? It's been a very long time since I watched SportsCenter or cared about SportsCenter. But when I was growing up, it was the guy that commentated the football games. He used to say, whoop, all the time. Um, I hope he's doing well. I have no idea. Actually, I can't say stuff like that because, you know, you say something like that and then somebody tweets you, oh, man, Kenny, that guy ended up being a terrible person. When I was growing up, he was, he was the real deal. I don't know what he's doing nowadays. So those are my top five. Next guard on my list is Josh Giddy. I mean, this man, Josh Giddy, is playing at the pace of a, a Kyle Anderson-ish type. Like, like nobody is speeding Josh Giddy up. He going to do what he got to do. And in today's game specifically, the man has 17 assists just picking apart the Golden State Warriors, bro. It is insane. And then his scoring has gone up. Like, I was there in Summer League, and I have a tweet from the Summer League while I was there. And I made a, I made a tweet saying that players that look too good to be playing Summer League, it was Quentin Grimes, who we see, you know, he's getting real minutes with the Knicks and an impactful player. It was Josh Giddy, who we're seeing right now, she had no reason to be in Summer League. And then the last guy was Moses Moody, who was good in Summer League, but damn, I mean, the NBA, uh, so far, he's very, 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 very hit or miss. But Josh Giddy, I mean, there's a lot of players on OKC that I really love to watch between him, J-Dub, and, of course, Shea. Um, but, man, the way Giddy can control a game at this young age is so impressive to me. And he also has the size to get down the hill a little bit. He's getting past his defenders with, with zero acceleration. It does not make sense. And that's why it's fun to watch. The next dude is a dude that I've, I've considered fun to watch for years at this point. Because I still don't know how he gets up as many three-point shots as he does and hits as many three-point shots as he does. I mean, this ain't on the level of Steph Curry. But Buddy Heald is, is one of the greatest three-point shooters we've ever seen in the game of basketball. And if you get a hot Buddy Heald night, and when he knows he's hot, he's taking some ridiculous shots. And he'll make them. And, and and boy, oh boy, like a good Buddy Hield game is so fun because it's going to be strictly three-point shots. And some of the shots are going to be ugly, and they're still going to go in. My next fourth is a dude that I've been in, I've, I've loved watching since his, his rookie season. He was drafted to my Chicago Bulls um, 21st over. I'm not Googling. I think it was like 21st overall at Arkansas. My guy, Bobby Portis. And it, it still hurts my heart a little bit. 
that he's just a, a, like a couple miles north of us, and he gives us the work still every time he plays against us. I'm happy that he is a champion. I'm happy he got that extension and everything. But Bobby Portis, even though this season he's not hitting the three-point shot at the clip that he was the last year, I mean, he's still playing with a crazy amount of passion. And he will have games where, like, even though you see him as a stretch four, he will tell you, nah, I don't really feel like shooting threes today. I'm going to just take pull-up mid-range jump shots. I'm going to hit a turnaround hook every once in a while. And now I'm going to play some of the best defense of my entire career. All right, I'm Googling it to see if I was right at the number pick he was drafted. 22nd overall. What did I say? 21st? Tough. Tough, tough, tough. Yeah, Bobby Portis was in the conversation for six men of the year. Then he missed a bunch of time. Um, but still, Bobby Portis... On that team, if of course, if you eliminate the All-Stars, he has been the most fun player to watch for me on that team. The next guy on my list is somebody that I kind of under the radar, radar a little bit when it comes to a fun factor, at least for me, until I saw a TikTok. And I wish I would have recorded the TikTok or saved the TikTok so I give the creator his love. But he has made a few videos raving about Michael Porter Jr. and how fun he is to watch. And I've always, yeah, I've always known that Mike Porter Jr. is fun, but then this guy put it into perspective of how crazy it is for Nikola Jokic to be this analytic god. And not necessarily Nikola Jokic himself, but like across the board, advanced analytics say Nikola Jokic is the greatest player of all time, basically. And then you have Michael Porter Jr. who will take a contested mid-range jump shot and to go in, or he'll at 6'10 just jump out the gym on jump shots and knock down it at a 40% clip. Um, I, I was I flipped the coin between him and Aaron Gordon because Aaron Gordon, as far as a cutter goes, and as far as you know making the right plays, has been stellar this season. But strictly fun to see a guy that is six ten and be able to just catch the ball wherever he is and just rise up and shoot it is 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 crazy at that size. So I, again, I wish I knew what the creator was. Hopefully, somebody in the comment section knows exactly who I who I'm talking about, and I can pin it so you can give so I can give him his love. But I I don't know what his name is. But Michael Porter Jr. is on this list. The last forward on my list is Nas. Reed. Nas Reed will come into a game and say, I don't care what's going on. I'm getting my shot attempts. He don't care the situation. He, he don't care if he's in foul trouble. The boy plays ball. And it, it's it's night and day between him and Rudy Gobert. He's got good hands. He can shoot. He stretches the floor. He plays super hard. Like, I love a player like Nas Reed as far as the fun factor because he just doesn't care. He's going to try to score the ball. No matter the situation. And I'm a center, and I'm going to get up my three-point shot. I just love that type of player. My first wild card spot is Jose Alvarado. And, and I think Jose Alvarado should have his own goddamn reality TV show about basketball. I'm actually, not even about basketball. Just in general. Give him his own show. Every time this man is mic'd up, he's giving you moment after moment after moment. Him hiding on the other bench. We ain't seen that in a little minute and be successful. But but just like the Grand Theft Alvarado thing is real. He's mic'd up on All-Star Weekend and he's hitting big time shots. Uh, who was it? D'Angelo Russell. This is the last year, but still, it rings in my head. Anytime I see De um see Jose Alvarado, D'Angelo Russell pointing at Jose Alvarado saying, can he shoot? And he says, yes, I can shoot. Then burns a three. Gotta love it, bro. Mike that man up at all costs. And then also, he he's just a really good basketball player, too. And then lastly, my last wild card spot is Cam Thomas. I, I can't say that he's hella consistent. He had the three 40-point games in a row. Um, His minutes aren't even consistent in Brooklyn. But when he's got it going, he's he's of the molds of the Jamal Crawford, who I loved growing up. He's of the molds of the Lou Will, where, again, like Nas Reed, but in the guard form, he going to get his shots up, and he don't care. And ain't nothing funny, because, again, I'm trying not to swear for that one commenter. Ain't nothing funny. You know what I'm saying? So that's my all-fun team, giving one all-star and a bunch of role players. You let me know how I did, or who would you substitute on your all-fun team.